and it's Lars Künstler. He has a, he makes a workshop at our institute. He's from Berlin, he's a media artist. Um, <laughs> Matthias Rümmel, he's also from Innsbruck, from my institute. And Samo Korosek is one of our partners. And we, um, we started this summer to actually use Blender for, um, for our um, courses. So we, um, because we, normally we work on Maya and Rhino and um, regular 3D modelers, which may, are mainly um, NURBS based. And um, so this semester we started um, working on or giving courses on Blender. And there's actually a lot of interest. We had um, last week we had a course from that actually Samo holds. There were 140 students which wanted to learn Blender. There were even 200 which applied for it. So there's um, a lot of interest from architectural st um, students to actually learn Blender. And what we actually wanted to, to talk to, especially Ton, on this conference is our wish why we think that we, we actually need NURBS for art architectural modeling. That's our main, the main thing. And um, this was actually a presentation for another auditorium. It's just, maybe I can just show it how we work. This is, for example, our um, first trimester students, they model on Rhino um, small cubes, and we have an STL printer, a little um, uh, 3D printer, and they work in the first trimester how to model actually a 3D model, and how to print it, and how to ha make this rapid prototyping process. And um, there's just some pictures of that. And what I want to show you is how actually that's, um, these are buildings from my professor, which is a partner of Saha Hadid Architects. And what I want to show you here is that actually NURBS are very important for some design process, processes. For example, these things, these are um, all modeled parametric in Maya. That means that they start with a line, line, um, line surface body. And um, a lot of times you have the, um, um, the necessity to, to change a whole model because there's different um, parameters change. For example, the site changes, um, investor changes, whatever. And so what we need normally is to, to change the whole building, just um, editing a few little parameters. And if you do that on sub D, um, you have to remodel the whole mesh. So that's why we normally work with um, parametric systems and with a history, a parametric history. Um, the person before showed it on that, on that um, easy 3D modeler, that it, if you have a parametric history, you actually can influence the work process afterwards. And there's one example, I'm gonna find it, um, which is actually dealing with the practical use of that. Uh, I don't know where it actually is. Yeah, see the thing is that, um, I mean, I agree that, that NURBS, NURBS is one geometrical model. If you think architectural, you start with um, sometimes with lines and walls and structures and not with bodies. So if you, if you work with bodies and you start with bodies and you model a body, you have kind of the, um, the, um, um, uh, the position of the, of the obvious is outside of the object. So you, you always have a, um, a one topo a topological of a closed, um, a closed object. So, and there's much more topological, I can't explain it in English, there's a lot of um, different topological um, ways to start architecture. Oh, wait. Which, um, this, doesn't, this doesn't mean we don't use the sub of Blender, mm -hmm. we love them, that's why we are mm -hmm. here. But uh, we miss that other feature, the NURBS, we just miss it we just missed the possibility to do it in both ways in one program, which would be really cool. Okay, I, I think I had Because um, what, what we do a lot, I, I could show other, other um, slides that we work a lot, very experimental actually with space, so we don't build roofs and, and uh, walls and things. We work a lot with, um, this is an example for a parametric building, and as you see, um, one, for example, one practical problem is that, that we use a lot of um, um, things like this, where you actually have to build a form for it. 
and you can use a form, if you can use a form twice, it's much more efficient and a lot of these, archi these architectures you can't really build because the building process is too expensive. So what we're working on is to, um, to make um, geometries easier that you actually can use um, one and the same form for a lot of different parts on an object and don't let it um, look um, trivial. Okay, that's, and that's an example, for, for example, in Maya, where um, a building is, it's, I think it's a museum, a building is produced parametric, and with changing these parameters here, you actually change on both sides the same um, shell. So you can use one shell two times, and if you can make that with, with more objects, um, the objects get cheaper, for example. And that's, that's one of our investigations, for example. And um, okay, and what we found out is that um, Blender actually has has this NURBS engine, but we don't really have the um, the right tools to work in it, like we do in Maya, for example. And what we what we really like also in Maya is to work with subdivision surfaces, turn to NURBS, change the NURBS, and and the way back. So because you always have um, um for for sure you have um. Nope, you have a lot of problems sealing them, and we know all these problems, and we deal with these problems day by day. But on the other side, we need NURBS if we, um, if we go to milling machines, because we need precise data, and we need smaller data, and that's actually the problem of the building process if you, if you want to use a, a program for a building process. And that's what we actually like to do. And, and, um, and this program we want to start, oh, that I told you before that we called Lemon just as a, as a um, working title, is the idea of um, um, bring, bringing input into, into, um, for Blender to develop um, um, or to help developing NURBS tools that we actually need for, experimental, for an experimental way. So the idea is not to, um, not to copy things that you use in Maya or in Rhino, for example, but to, to develop new um, Blender-like NURBS tools. I don't know if I, if I expressed okay. that correctly. I mean, maybe you, you knew, but uh, last year, mm -hmm. one of the Google Summer of Code projects was mm -hmm. to refresh the blend of curves mm -hmm. and NURBS editing. And unfortunately, the developer um, didn't finish it, and he, he wasn't very much familiar with the whole NURBS editing and NURBS tools. So he had to spend a lot of time in learning how NURBS work and how you can implement it. Mm -hmm. So now it's again completely left alone. It's a, an, an orphan within the Blender source tree. And we look for people who would like to pick it up. Mm -hmm. But I do know a couple of tools that make NURBS extremely powerful, especially for welding and blending surfaces. Uh, trimming, you can uh, cut holes in it, and then you can extrude uh, pipes out of it. Uh, stuff like that. You, you want to have holes in things, and want to cut cut things in segments, and you want to have it beveled. All of that you can do in NURBS, but to develop that, it, you need a highly qualified uh, mathematics uh, person who also understands the needs for mm -hmm. artists. Mm -hmm. And Amaya is an original NURBS tool. I mean, from scratch, mm -hmm. everything has been done in NURBS within Maya mm -hmm. because the industrial designers need it. And that's why architects can use it too because NURBS is scientifically uh, correct. You can describe it and you can uh, turn it into little models and you can calculate weight and uh, dynamics, everything with NURBS. So I agree, that's useful. Yeah, that's, and we, what, what we already tried is we found a professor from the Geometric Mathematical Institute at, in Innsbruck. He's very interested in, he's working with um, Rhino, for example, helping development develop Rhino. And, um, and we have um, um, professors from the Informatic Institute. The only thing is that they're all interested in, and we actually started the project, and what we can do is, is um, bring content. That's what all, all our needs, actually. And um, so at the moment we try to kind of arrange a program around this. For example, we want to make um, uh, a course in February, in semester break, where, um, where we find, try to find sponsors to actually pay for um, someone who, may, maybe that person that developed the NURBS, to invite him and show the informatics students in Innsbruck um, how they can continue developing it. 
for example, or show um, um, persons who want to make their diploma degrees or master studies, for example. So we try to try to um, find appetizers for these students because everyone is interested in it, but anyone really starts doing something. So and what we can do is bring content, and we can't program. So if we if we could, we would. But <laughs> so and that's that's the thing. We have we have a need for something. And we we um, we have the students which um, are very interested in it, which work with it. Till um, um, in this semester, there's these 140 students which work on on a project. Um, each student does a different thing, um, making skeletons, making to render, and just experiment the horizon of the program for us or architecturally in special. And then um, after that, we see what people are interested in it. <laughs> actually. We try. We try to find um, or to to um, have Forschungsförderungen. We try to find um, develop different programs to actually um, um, get, funding. get funding for for Blender. And it's really rough actually to argue with an open source software. That's what we actually found out at the places where where um, architectural investigation are, are interesting. So. We're still on it, but it's not very, not very easy. But so we have to find different ways. I think. But it, it also helps to uh, keep promoting it. Uh, images like this, also uh, more technical images that you can see the wires and, and how has mm -hmm. it been constructed, mm -hmm. uh, is for developers interesting too. So they can see, aha, so that's the tool and that's an option. So if we fix that and that and that and that, then you already might have something more useful. Mm -hmm. But for always. But the, the NURB system is, is not big, but it's very difficult to, to get to understand what would be the first simple thing I can add and immediately get a lot of positive feedback back from the users. But you don't know. And the, the problem with the student mm -hmm. was that he spent two months on coding things that didn't benefit anyone. So I, he ended up probably with a lot of work but nobody knows what it does or what it is for or what you can do with it because you didn't finish it. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. What, so that's why we called it actually Lemon because we thought about having a, a parallel programming process. I mean, that was, that was actually the, the idea we just made to um, kind of, um, if, if we could fund money or a fund for it, to parallel program um, architectural tools or, or maybe just design tools. And um, parallel to it, it's just... Uh, Things I showed the people who don't know Alice and Stream. Ah, that's, ah, that's the wrong. Ah, that's the wrong thing. Um, no, it's it's, it's uh, propo uh, the call for a workshop at the university. So. Yeah. <laughs> and and this is actually the call for a render farm. We, um, it's which is starting at at our university, which was possible because Blender's open source, so made made the argumentation much easier. So that that was that was for that, but um. Uh, it, it is possible that if the university says, well, we can have uh, somebody graduating on a project or we can have an internship or any way of sponsoring a developer or a small team of developers to pick this up, uh, just contact me mm -hmm. about it. I can help finding people or making publicity for it so that you can mm -hmm. get this going. But at this very moment, I don't know of anyone who would really be interested to pick it up immediately. Yeah. So you have to create more added value to this. Yeah, for sure. Okay, thanks.